Well, what's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Saturday evening. It is 8.09, and unfortunately, man, you know, we want to get this game on, but tonight, for some of y'all, I don't know if everybody in the country is still doing daylight savings time. Something I think they just need to do the hell away with, okay? There's nothing worse than, you know, it's 4.30 in the evening and it's dark out. I got shit I want to do, man. This whole thing, I don't want to get up at 6 o'clock when the sun comes up then. I want to go ahead and be able to have that extra time in the evening to do stuff. But be that as it may, you turn your clocks back, which means it's another hour we have to wait before the Dallas Cowboys take on the Philadelphia Eagles. And this game is huge, okay? Now, Philly 500, he's on live right now with his buddy, uh, um, uh, Joey Shakes. And shout out to them. Grocery store, I used to actually swallow it, pause. But, you know. Oh, Joey's used packing to. and he used to. I used to pack and swallow. I used to do a lot of stuff. Dude, that should be your, like, intro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Your intro well, is just the camera. It. You know, so as we get through here and we analyze things, there's perception and then there's reality. There's two totally different things. And I don't think people always get that, that you believe that something is true or you've seen something that makes you think that it's the case all the time. For example, you think that, well, Dak Prescott, you know, because you've seen his turnovers over and over again, that he turns over the ball more than other people. But the reality is, is Josh Allen, Pat Mahomes, uh, Jalen Hurts are all one touchdown, excuse me, interception away from Jimmy G, who's turned over the ball more than anybody. Okay. But your perception is that Dak Prescott throws a whole lot of interceptions. And the reality is he's actually one of the lowest turnover uh, players in the history of football, as opposed to Josh Allen, who's had more turnovers over the last three years than anybody. But be that as it may, it's kind of like with players. The Cowboys, you see all the time. You see every single play. You see the good ones, the bad ones, and so on. Other players and other teams, basically, you see the highlights. You see the great things they do. So your perception is, well, Justin Herbert, he's a better quarterback than Dak Prescott. You know, he's doing things that Dak Prescott can't do, but yet his team is ass-ass, and his coach could get fired this week if they don't get a win. Literally. You believe that Josh Allen, oh my God, Josh Allen, Dak Prescott, they're not in the same category. But the reality is the Cowboys and Josh Allen, uh, same record. We lost in the same weekend as Josh Allen. They only scored 10 points in their playoff game. So there's perception and then there's reality. And so a couple of things that are perceptions that we have about the Eagles, but the reality is... They're not what you think. And I had, when we were doing our live stream, you know, I love doing my live uh, live stream uh, call-in show. People who are channel members and, you know, guys like Brian, uh, you know, the game, uh, game Time Brian and Thomas Garrett and Stacy Schubert and, you know, Mr. Cowboy, you know, that all call in that are channel members. You, If you're a channel member, you get to call in and be part of the show and stuff. And so we've had these you know, great uh, fans and stuff that call in and giving their perception. And a lot of times it gives me a chance to kind of step back and look at some of the numbers of things. And one of the perceptions that we have because of what they did last year is that the Eagles are a great team running the football. In the same way, we think of the Miami Dolphins. Oh, my God, Miami Dolphins, they're just incredible. Well, they lead the league in points per game at 33 and a half points, but that's skewed because of one game. Because of one game that they had 70 points, it just blows it away. So if you say, you know, you, you divide that, that's 10 points of their average is because of that one game of the seven games they've played. Reality is they don't score 70 points, but that makes the numbers that much higher. And so when we talk about Swift, Swift was a great acquisition. Another great one done by Howie Roseman. And when you look on the surface and say, oh, my God, DeAndre Swift, he's got 571 yards on the season, and he's averaging 4.9 yards a carry. You say, oh, my God, we got to face that guy. He is freaking incredible, right? 
But here's the thing that's kind of interesting as I started going through this. When you look at the numbers, they're not as good as the perception is. For example, week number one, Swift, one rush, three yards. Okay, so they only ran him one time. So you get it. Okay, that, does, that, that one you could throw out. But then when he played against the Minnesota Vikings, oh, my God, he was an absolute beast. 28 carries, 175 yards, 6.2 yards a carry. And that was his coming out party for the Eagles. I'm coming out. Yeah, he came, he came out. He came out. And all of a sudden, you said, oh, my God, they got themselves an incredible running back. And he followed it up the next week with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 16 carries, 130 yards, 8.1 yards a carry. We're like, oh, my God. The Eagles have a great running attack. And they got great wide receivers. Here's the thing. He's got 571 yards on the season. That's great. Only half the season. That's He's, he's headed to be a 1,200-yard back, right? But here's the thing, that 571 yards, two games, is 305 yards of it. If you take that off, if you take that off and you look at the other games that he played, it actually has not been that good. Those two games, 6.2 yards and 8.1 yards per carry. Oh, you, you don't, I, I know you Eagle fans don't, you, you don't believe in numbers, so let me... Let me put this up on the screen here. Hold on. Let me put this back up on the screen here. Hang on one second because I know you won't believe me. But here's the thing that's kind of interesting is, is that the right one? Nope, wrong one. Forgive me here. You know, I know I'm not a professional here. I'm I'm here at my basement. My production quality stinks, um, but I'm bringing you the real numbers. If you take out those two games, the other five games, it was average. Against the Commanders, 14 carries, 56 yards, 4 yards a carry. Against the Rams, 17 carries, 70 yards, 4.1. Those aren't bad. And then against the Jets, 10 carries, 1.8 yards. And then against the Dolphins, 15 carries, 62, 4.1. And against the Commanders, 16 carries, 57 yards, 3.6. So if you take out those two games, and I'm yes, I'm doing a Colin Cowherd here. You look at the trend of the last five weeks that he's rushed. DeAndre Swift ain't making that much. Hey, he, he I mean, he, it's, it's average at best. It's average at best. 4.1, 4, 4.0, 1.8, 4.1, 3.6. Here's another one that's even more interesting because, again, we think about, you know, everybody saying the Cowboys, we got to stop the run. We got to stop them being, yeah, well, here's what's crazy. Again. The Eagles started off hot, hot, running the football. Let me move this over just a little bit so we can see the teams that they faced. Rushing the football against New England, you know, 3.9. Nothing nothing spectacular, but New England has a great defense. 25 carries, 97 yards, 3.9. Against Minnesota, it was hell because, again, Swift went off 5.4 yards, 259 yards. Uh, against the Buccaneers, 201 yards, uh, five-point average. You're looking at that and saying, my God, they can run the football. That's, that's what Mike McCarthy was thinking about when he was talking about running the football. But the reality is, that's not that team. Now, since they played the Commanders with a better defensive front, although they're terrible on defense, they only got 104 yards against the Rams. You know, that's another good front on the defense, 159 yards. That's really, that's not bad. That's that's really good. You want to shoot for 100 yards. But when they face the Jets, which is another really good defensive team, 80 yards, 3.6. Against the Dolphins, 99 yards on 34 carries, 2.9. And against the Commanders, again, 22 carries, 22.7. So the reality is... The Eagles running the football isn't as good the last five weeks 
as what it had been to start out. The Eagles, the last five weeks, have pretty much been one-dimensional with Jalen Hurts to A.J. Brown. I want to point out something that's kind of interesting. That's kind of uh, The reason I go through all this is, and you know, again, this might be the rope-a-dope. This might be the Eagles were looking and saying, we're going to, Jalen Hurts, we want you to act like you're injured, and then we're going to come out and you're going to run the ball like crazy. So don't fall for the rope-a-dope here, just in case. He's out on the field. Don't, don't feel sorry for him. He's out on the field of battle. You, uh, uh, go, go right ahead for him. But you look at the Jets, the Dolphins, and the Commanders. The Dolphins game was the game that I noticed that he was limping, that Jalen Hurts was limping. And then the next week against the Dolphins, you saw him, you know, of course, uh, a little bit more. And this past week against the Commanders, he was really limping. Now, again, it might be the rope-a-dope. But looking at this, they haven't run 100 yards in the last three games. If we can keep that under 100 yards again, like the other teams have, make them one-dimensional, and find a way to cover A.J. Brown. I know they got not just A.J. Brown, they got Devontae Smith, and, of course, they got Dallas Goddard, who, who says he hates the Cowboys, and the Cowboys don't have any love for him either. Um, I think we've got a really good chance. And the question is, is this r- lack of running in correlation to Jalen Hurts' knee? Hmm. Acquiring minds want to know. But it definitely bears watching. Um, that offense has been scoring points like crazy. But I will say, they haven't been playing the best of teams. I mean, remember, the Buccaneers, the Commanders twice, the Jets, the Rams. And I'm not sold yet on the Dolphins because the Dolphins have yet to beat a winning team. Anyway, that's what I have for you guys the night before. The Cowboys versus the Eagles. We're going to see what we're going to see. We're going to start out here early in the morning because we have the early game at 9.30 in the morning, which should be a good matchup. And we've got good games going on all day long. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys, as well as you ladies. And um, remember, just remember, good people, it's just football. Fuck them birds. Fly, eagles, fly. Now nah, we shoot those birds out of the sky. Stupid dumbasses managed to give up a third and 30 to my sexy arm. Pathetic defense and team. No wonder I...